Hello and welcome to NDTV. I'm Rohit Khildani. Joining me is Prithvi Raj, very talented actor, our special guest today, and of course, one of the young flag bearers of Malayalam cinema. Thank you for having us, firstly. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to take you back because um, I've been watching your interviews off late. Um, at the age of 36, 100 films already done. When did all this happen? Good question, actually. <laughs> um, so I, I started doing films when I was yet to turn 18. Right. And uh, films were very different back then because uh, as a main lead actor, you would be spending 15, maybe 20 days to shoot a film in Malayalam. Okay. Uh, that's before this whole transformation of Malayalam cinema happened. Right. So we used to go through a phase, when I say we, my generation of actors yes. used to go through a phase where we would be coasting through seven films a year. Wow. You know? And uh, uh, I don't think I ever stopped working. Hmm. Uh, my wife definitely thinks I have not stopped ever. <laughs> uh, so I guess when uh, for 17 years you continuously invest yourself in an industry that churns out so much work so efficiently, right? you at one point stop, turn back and realize the numbers are pretty <laughs> staggering. So. Yes. The industry has given you a lot, your fans have given you a lot, you have given it a lot. So what have you lost out on? Because you've been working non-stop since you were 17. Yeah. Is there something that you think, I missed this? Yeah, I mean, I wish I had uh, a college life, right? which uh, I made this really uh, uh, immature decision uh, to to go to Australia for my undergrad and I came back uh, two years, uh, two one years, and a half yeah. years of it and uh, right. then I never went back mm. because I kept doing films mm. and uh, so I never really had the Indian campus life. Mm. You know, I've only lived that through films of mine right. uh, and of course uh, there are times when I consistently hope and right. wish that I had anonymity. Yeah. You don't realize anonymity is priceless until you lose it. Right. Having said all this, uh, I understand that uh, every job has a trade-off. Mm. And this is the trade-off of being in cinema. Right. And when you look at how much cinema has given me and mm. uh, where it's brought me in life at this age, I really can't be complaining. For anonymity, what do you do? If you have a few days off, what would you like to do? Would you like to, are you someone who would like to sit at home with your family? Would you travel, go somewhere? Actually, what I love most is being at home right. and doing nothing. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, when I'm home in Cochin, doing nothing never happens. So uh, the way my wife and me go about things is we always keep about six or seven different visas active and handy. <laughs> so you know, That's a good idea. Yeah, so yeah. if we suddenly think, oh, hang on, I mean, three days I'm not working. Let's go somewhere tonight. We can just wow. hop on a flight and leave. <laughs> right. You know, what, what I really found interesting, Prithvi, when I watched your interviews, was that you talk so passionately about taking this cinema places. Mm. First question is obviously, since you've done so many films a number of years, what's been the biggest learning? Well, I mean, the biggest learning as far as cinema is concerned is that there is never a stop mm. sign for what you learn in cinema because it's, it's a constantly evolving art form, yeah. you know, uh, and uh, I've always believed that Malayalam cinema's biggest challenge is territorial mm. and by that what I mean is uh, we are a very talented industry in terms of our technicians, our actors, the kind of content we come up with. Uh, but we have to face the fact that we still operate within a really small territory called Kerala. Mm. And even if you look at the Malayali diaspora across the world, uh, Gulf being a significantly big market, uh, even then in comparative terms, uh, the Malayali diaspora is quite small. Mm. Mm. Uh, so for our cinema to grow beyond what will be the eventual saturation point, right. I think we'll have to start producing content which will appeal to people who do not know Malayalam and Kerala. Yeah. And by that I do not necessarily mean cinema in other languages. I mean Malayalam films which can travel. Right. Uh, if a Kannada film like KGF can yeah. travel the whole of the country, of course. I don't see a reason why a Malayalam film cannot, cannot. provided the content that we produce is relatable. Hmm. Uh, so that's what I'm really looking forward to. There are two things that that's stopping us from doing that. One. I'd like such content to be produced more consistently okay. uh, in an ideal world of my As Malayalam of now, cinema. it's not being consistent. We are going through a great phase. We okay. are getting there. And this phase that I keep referring to is very new. Yeah. Um, we are probably talking about the last five or six years when, you know, we've suddenly uh, come out of the shell and mm. we've started thinking of really out-of-the-box kind of films. Right. And the greatest thing is that they work in mainstream uh, mm. cinema today. Uh, secondly, I still think that we are yet to fully exploit our revenue channels. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Malayalam cinema is seriously uh, 
ventured out into uh, trying to realize what our true overseas potential is if we have a way of monetizing OTT platforms. Uh, so all those avenues as far as Malayalam cinema is concerned are completely unexplored. Could you explain to the viewers how do revenues work here? Is it main satellite till now? Is the satellite as big as it was? Is it is box office growing faster? Uh, is television big? So it's a bit of both. Okay. We went through a phase where uh, the satellite market was completely over bloated. Right. Figures were completely non-realistic. Then there was a crash, like there was all across all industries. Like a correction. Yeah, yeah. there was a correction phase that set in. Right. Malayalam cinema's biggest attraction in terms of production feasibility hmm. to date remains a fact that for a medium budgeted film, hmm. you can still hope to recover about 80% of your budget through satellites alone. Wow. So that still remains the biggest feasibility factor as far as Malayalam cinema is concerned. Right. But what that also does is that it kind of pushes us back to a very conservative way of doing business. Right. At some point it became stagnant that, you know, it's easy money, make a film, 80% will anyway come from satellite and people took a back seat. Do you think that went, that phase was there? That went horribly wrong actually. Yeah. Uh, so, the, during this period where I, uh, where the satellite rights where I thought were completely over bloated, mm. uh, we went through a phase where a lot of films were being made mm. with theatricals being not on the priority list at all. So what that translates to is really bad quality yeah, films, right? Because the satellite players buy the films even before they hmm. see anything hmm. of it, and most of these films hmm. have been part of the yeah. film. I must admit, most of these films, even before you finish your shoot, uh, you've recovered your investment. So from there on, the entire attitude is. Finish it as fast as you can, however you can, and you know, just let it go. But we were talking about why this cinema can't go places with, with platforms like Netflix. Mm. We are sitting and watching a show called Fada, which is an Israeli yeah. language, something that we just don't understand, but we enjoy the show. It became successful all over. So you, you think something like that can happen where a good content from here can go to other countries? Absolutely, absolutely. That's exactly what I meant. Mm. Sacred Games mm. is a big hit in Kerala. It is. It yeah. did not have a Malayalam version. Yeah. It did not have a Malayalam version. Mm. People understood what they were trying to say, what they were trying to communicate. And people watched it because the production values were yeah. so good. Yeah. Uh, I believe each episode of Sacred Games uh, mm. actually costs as much as a small Malayalam film. <laughs> right. Uh, so imagine if, uh, if that kind of funding and that kind of backing and such a platform right. is given to the most talented filmmakers in Kerala. Yeah. I can vouch for it that they will mm. give you world class content. Right, that's true. You know, when we interview um, filmmakers in Hollywood, they always talk about the big screen experience. They say that, you know, when our kids are watching films on the phone, we get angry and we want them, we want audio from here and here. Are you someone who likes it that way? Are you okay watching films on iPad? Uh, so that's a good question because that's where entertainment is headed now. And that's how I think, I think that is going to play the biggest role in the next cycle of evolution as far as cinema is concerned. Right. There is no way that you're going to fight OTTs and mobile platforms mm. on their turf and win. So what do we do? We enhance the theatrical experience. Mm. We make content which then we can confidently say, go on and watch it in your phones if you want, yeah. but you know you're not getting the whole deal of it. <laughs> right. So I think going ahead, cinema as we know today will increasingly become the big screen experience. Yeah. You know? um, and uh, I think there will be content that are OTT specific. But both will coexist, you mean? Absolutely. And I, 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 I won't be surprised if in the near future we'll have films shot, edited and made hmm. for mobile phones. Right. Uh, I think we are headed there. And which is why I completely relate to somebody like a Christopher Nolan when yeah. he says that, please shoot in film, you know, <laughs> um, you, you understand the latitude of shooting in film and, right. and let people come and watch that on big screen. That's yeah. so true. You know, um, have, have these platforms now good content, like you said, Sacred Games is a great example, is available to everyone at a reasonable cost. There was a time where the elite kids would watch a Harry Potter and understand that, okay, this is only great quality. Now, now you're a director yourself. Do direct filmmakers also have to pull up their socks because your own audience is also watching great quality everywhere. Yeah. So, uh, see, I can speak from Malayalam yes. cinema. Uh, as, as an industry, as small and limited as ours, we have to eventually live with the fact mm. that we cannot fight, forget Hollywood, right. we cannot fight Bollywood mm. or we cannot fight Telugu and Tamil cinema 
uh, in terms of scale. Why is that? Because our market is so small. Market is because small. our market is so small. For a Malayalam film, there is only so much that you can play along with. Right. But where can you really up the ante? It's your content. Mm. And I think we are really blessed with that. I think we are blessed with uh, a slew of new age writers and mm. filmmakers who think out of the box, who come up with such endearing new mm. content. So that is enough. You know, mm. you really don't have to uh, have sleek looking, uh, yeah. big scale mm. uh, action adventures uh, mm. to, to travel. Mm. If your content is great, you still travel. Right. You know? I mean, uh, I'm sure a, a paranormal activity was shot in half the budget of a normal <laughs> Malayalam film. Yeah. And, and it took the world by storm. So right. ultimately, it's, it's a content on how you present it. Right. You know, coming to your film, Nine, uh, the trailer is fantastic. Thank the you way. so much. So, um, you know, people have seen the trailer. It's, it's a, of course, a story of a father and son from whatever little we can make out. Span over nine days, if I'm not wrong. The story uh, is the lead up and the nine days, the length of which is the duration of a, a global event that hmm. happens. Hmm. Yeah. Why this genre? I wasn't looking for this. This right. came to me. Okay. And frankly, I haven't heard anything like this before. Right. And at least within Malayalam cinema, I don't think something like this has been attempted before. Even with all this backing the film, the core plot of it is very relatable. Mm. Uh, it's, it's about a struggled father-son relationship, Family, yeah. a struggling father-son relationship. And I say struggling father-son mm. relationship, I mean both of them have their own personal battles mm. to fight within themselves. And uh, it's what happens between them and what happens their relationship during the course of these nine days. Right. How horror is this horror? Is it? I, it, it would be unfair to call this a horror film. Okay. It is not a horror film. Mm. Neither is it a science fiction film. But it has got elements of all this. Mm. Uh, it, the story happens in the backdrop of a, of a sci-fi event, mm. if you want. Like a cosmic science fiction event. Right. Uh, at, at one point, the narrative slips into uh, the fashion of a horror film. Mm. Uh, and then the entire film is an emotional roller coaster. Okay. And the film is also a psychological thriller. Right. So it's yeah, got various right. elements to it. Mm. Um, I know I'm making it sound very complex, mm. but when you see the film, it's actually a very simple, straightforward right. story, which kind of engages you from the beginning to the end. Right. Now, all this is my personal opinion. Of and course. you have to understand that I'm biased. <laughs> of course, you should yeah. be. You know, um, there were 10 years ago, your fans would watch everything and um, they would just meet you at different places where Correct. you would go. Today, they on Twitter, they can tell you something they like or something they don't like. Do you enjoy this closeness where someone is that close that they can tell you that some they don't like something? I'm a fiercely private person. Right. I like my space. Mm. You know, uh, I there's a there's a point beyond which I do not let anybody in. Right. But I also understand that uh, over the years, the biggest reason my career is flourished and the biggest reason that I exist as an actor is because people like watching me. Your they fans. like me. Yeah. And uh, I understand that uh, I'm at least in a way responsible mm. to give some of it back to them. And you're free to criticize me or my films as lo long as you use parliamentary decent language. language correct. And uh, you have to uh, give in to the fact that today the easiest cheapest most effective platform that to market your films is, is social. the social media. Yeah. And I'd be lying to say, uh, lying if I said that I do not use my social handle to promote my films. That's what I use them the most for. Most for, yeah. yeah. You know, since you said you're the, you are the last generation that had the best of both, uh, what was better? Is this better? Was that better? The romantic idea that I have about the olden days of cinema, right. I think that would have been better. Yeah. You know, I think, <laughs> I think it would have been so charismatic to be able to see an actor only when they make an appearance. Yes, yeah. I'm sure the, the, the adrenaline rush that our fathers or grandfathers would have had catching a glimpse of Mr. Bachchan. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That doesn't happen when our kids catch a glimpse of Shah Rukh. Yeah, yeah, so, correct. Yeah, so that sounds very romantic to me. Yeah, do, do, do you follow that? Because uh, say even, even Shah Rukh, Salman, Amir's generation is actually the last generation that's seeing the stardom that fans stand outside the bungalow even now. Yeah. Which we don't see in Varun Dhawan, Alia Bhatt. I don't think it'll happen you. again. Because I don't think that kind of that kind of superstardom uh, will exist again because the concept of superstardom has changed. Changed. Uh, mm. I, I don't mean to say that there won't be stars who are as big. Mm. There will be bigger yeah. stars, right. of course. 
but the concept of superstardom the, the way you perceive superstardom i think has changed right yeah how do you watch films do you watch um, as a viewer as a fan because you will also watch the technical part of it yeah. i was watching your interview where you said i watch khaki and i called someone and i found out who's the person who shot it do you watch everything also as a filmmaker as an actor i have to admit sometimes i have to make an effort to forget everything else and just right. enjoy the experience uh, sometimes i do have to make an effort it i think happens at a subconscious level hmm. where you enjoy a film thoroughly yeah. and then at the end of the viewing experience you think oh, that was a really very very good transition how they cut into that scene from you know. <laughs> so i think it it it's a subconscious of, yeah thing. i mean I, i can't help it right you've also shot a film recently i saw on your facebook because thanks to you posting it i i am an insanely lucky debut director uh, <laughs> I understand that the project has the profile that it has mm. and it has got the hype that it has mm. because it's the first time that a mainstay actor Actors. is is directing another legend superstar. Mm. Uh, yeah. This actually happened uh, just like that. Uh, I was told the subject by Mr. Murli Gopi my right. writer which he had in mind uh, with Mr. Lal in it. Mm. And uh, he asked me would I direct it and he uh, asked you. Yeah, he asked me. and i was like i would love to but i don't i don't know if mr mohan lal and the producer yeah. it's, it's like mr mohan lal's home company yeah the producer mr anthony perimbau would would take to the idea i mean hmm. i think they might just brush it off like like a whim <laughs> of you know this young actor right but the next day the producer landed up when hmm. i was shooting in hyderabad and he said we are doing it wow and mr mohan lal called me and he said i would love to do this let's you know Great. yeah so that's how it took off and it's been an absolute delight uh to work with uh, mr mohan lal the it's actually been the most intense training i have received as an actor right because i've seen now i've i've had the opportunity to uh interact with so many actors on a level that you cannot when you're a co-actor when you're a co-actor because the process of each actor mm. is so personal mm. that they let only the director and sometimes a writer into that process now before every scene mr mohan lal would come and ask me So why why am I looking at him like that? Mm. Uh, so what do you think if if instead of this I do that? Mm. You know, can I say this like that? So Are you I, someone who accommodates that? Absolutely. Right. I look forward to it. And at the end of the day I'm dealing with Mr. Mohan Lal Raju yeah. Arya, you know, <laughs> I mean they know what they're doing. So. Right. You've been on a set for so many years. How was this set different for you? The decision making was entirely mine. Mm. and it's a huge film right it's a very big film in terms of its budget its canvas mm. and the responsibility was even bigger because i had a producer who just completely believed in my vision so the brief to the production team was whatever he wants so that kind of really puts the ball in your court you right. know when it it kind of uh, tells you that hang on before you make a decision <laughs> because if i say i want something i know i'm getting it too early to ask maybe but will you direct again did you enjoy it as much I absolutely will. I enjoyed yes. it that much. You know, um, one thing we see in Malayalam cinema is the camaraderie between all the actors. You working with Mohan Lal, you are rapper with other younger stars, Pradeep Dulkar or Fahad or anyone. You, what is the? How does this work here? Could you explain to the viewers? Are you all friends? Do you all meet often? Go out. Well, we don't meet often. Okay. Uh, but I think it also comes from the fact that we are such a small industry, that uh, we are we are so small. and we are so intensive in terms of our output mm. uh, that we have to cross paths you know right. once in a while so um, fahad's wife uh, yeah. just did a film with me right and uh, she's best friend with dulka <laughs> so yeah. i met him and i was dubbing for it right uh, and now you know i'm i'll go see a film of uh, mr mamuti uh, right. a preview of a <laughs> film of mr mamuti and i'm sure i'll meet dulka there and you know so it's all like it's that. all so yeah it's very small it's very small but where then is there a competition element somewhere you watch something you're like okay i would like to do this oh absolutely i've i've seen so many films of so many people and thought oh boy i mean i would have loved to do that right but i think our our industry is actually big enough to accommodate all of us Everyone. and even more uh, see we as an industry consistently make 100 plus films every year wow <laughs> and how many lead actors do we have even today if we <laughs> yeah. start counting i'm not sure we'll reach 10 yeah okay and uh, as an actor in today's malayalam cinema if you work back to back right you can do four films a year 
Yeah. That still makes only for 40. Since you are changing with time very well, I should say, are you open to web shows? I would love to. I was actually offered a very, very interesting web series recently. And how brilliantly was it written? I so wish I could have done it, but I am not because of other constraints okay. and stuff. I am really looking forward to being involved with uh, that platform because it gives you liberty of taking your time with telling a story. Yes. Which as a filmmaker, cinema does not give does you. Not give you know, the biggest challenge, especially when, when I'm doing a film like Lucifer, right. which is the one I directed, it's a story that spans so many characters yeah. and so many events. Mm. To be concising it to the length of a feature film right. is actually your biggest challenge. Right. Sometimes during the course of Lucifer's shooting, I had so wished that it was a web series. Oh, really? You yeah. know, so that I could really dwell on each point right. and I could really kind of milk each moment <laughs> of drama. Right. Uh, and that's what a web series gives you. Have you binge watched any web show yourself? Well, the only thing I binge watch is uh, Top Gear and Grand Tour because <laughs> I'm a car fan. <laughs> right. But actually, I saw Sacred Games. Um, I don't know if you can call it binge watching, but over the course of like three, four days. Yeah, that is binge watching. Okay, yeah. And I did binge watch. Thank you. Great. Please. My last question is, since you're a fan of Bollywood movies also, you watch all of them. I heard you said you liked, you liked Dabang. Is there any plan of directing something there? Yeah, of course. I would love to do a film in Hindi actually. Uh, I have something in mind which is it's too early to speak about it. Right. But it also means uh, taking that much time off my acting career from the South. Which is something I'll have to seriously think about because right. Lucifer took about eight to nine months wow. uh, of my time and what I have in mind next will take twice that much. So um, <laughs> that's something I have to seriously think about. So we should expect you back there in two years from now? Let's see. I don't know. Uh, well, you make plans and they never work accordingly, do they? Great. Hope they work for you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. pleasure. And best of luck for Ryan. Thank you so much. Thank you.